Tigers of Pantang. 1985 for that one. The Desert of No Love. Paul, by that point, the Tigers line up. John Deverell, of course, on vocals. Mm-hmm. Must be one of our favourite singers on Northern Rocks. Oh, ah, great, we've, great we've covered him. Uh, Steve Lamb and Neil Shepard on guitars. Dave Donaldson on bass. And Brian Dick on drums. A Steve Thompson song, that one, Paul. Um, well, we could tell from the the, 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 the way he gave us two kind of unfit songs last night. We were put into action as that was playing there. So you could tell it was one of Steve's tracks. Well, we will say, last night, myself and Paul attended um, a songwriting masterclass, did we not? We did. Here in, in Stockton, um, hosted by Steve Thompson, of course, uh, we uh, called earlier on the godfather of the northeast of uh, northern, uh, new wave of British heavy metal, of course. Um, last night... Paul, what an enjoyable night it was. Wasn't it great, eh? It was brilliant. I mean, everything, the presentation, I did mean to say it to Steve where he got his shirt from. Oh. Because there was a, a definite Jason King vibe about the puffs. <laughs> but, you know, the... the, the great shirt. The, yeah. The talk was, was magnificent. Wasn't it brilliant, really eh? Wasn't it a really good night? Yeah. And, and it was so interesting for, you know, what, how can we describe ourselves as semi-musos yeah. people have been on the on the fringe of the music business let's say um, wasn't it really interesting about song structures and stuff like that it really made you think didn't it well it, it, there was a bit of everything wasn't there it was yeah there was a bit of personal anecdotes there yeah was, there was a bit of steve's take on what makes songs work that's right and really work yeah yeah and then there was the the business side of things as well which was quite intriguing <laughs> that was that interested me no end the business the business side of it how things have changed yeah well this absolutely. things like royalties and making sure you get paid yeah. for your work and stuff like that was really really, really interesting yeah. the, the minuscule amount that artists get for streaming insane just absolutely incredible. Absolutely insane. And, and yeah, I mean, it was laced with... Steve's a very, very funny guy. It was laced with his humour and, and, yeah, and yeah. a good good mm. crack and, 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 and just, mm. th- you know, uh, things, you know, uh, there was lots of, I won't make that mistake again. And then he did. And, 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 you know, uh, but really, really good night and, and, and certainly took you back. And, and, and some of the stuff regarding the industry, so especially nowadays... Where I mean I don't know now, Paul, how artists make money. Some of the some of the amounts that some of Steve's songs have sold. When you look at the things like yeah. gold discs for Celine Dion and Shane Easton and, and 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 things like that, They're really some really um, interesting stories. Um, you know, and they say laced with with Steve's humour. The one, one of them I particularly liked was uh, back in I think it was 1980. Uh, Steve uh, wrote a song that was covered by uh, the American soul singer Bruce Ruffin. Oh yes, uh, got released. <laughs> released on a single and everybody's name on the label was their full name it was bruce ruffin it was produced by i can't remember so and so so and so uh the song title had his full name everything was the full name except the writer which yes. is in, which is in brackets merely as thompson yep <laughs> i mean he, he rightly said you know no wonder we didn't get paid for things you know um but it was it was a, say a really good night and you know, Steve underplays himself quite a lot, doesn't he, in one aspect. Mm. And that aspect is this British new wave of heavy metal stuff. Well, that's yeah. where we knew him from, isn't that's it? That's right, that's yeah. Where, that's, where, that's where I, if anybody had said to me about Steve, Steve Thompson, Thompson you know, yeah. said, oh, neat records. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Immediately, that's what I've known him but, from. But in a rather, you know, in a rather you know, lovely, in a lovely way, he underplays that, doesn't he? he doesn't, yeah. yeah, he yeah. was at the forefront of that, all of that, you One know. Of the architects of it. The, the the new wave of British heavy metal started in the northeast, oh, yeah. and it started with neat records. Totally. And he really needs to start playing on that a bit more. If you if you can, Steve, you need a neat records night. But um, yeah, some of the other stuff he's talking about, and some of the artists that have recorded his songs as well as obviously, you know, writing almost full albums for the likes of Tigers of Pantang. Yeah. Um, you know, producing them, playing on playing on this stuff as well. Um, they were a great band, weren't they? They. Tigers. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think at the at the top of their game, they should have been the British Van Halen. Uh, they should have been, yeah. And, and you know, if you put them up against the likes of Def Leppard and bands like that, equally oh, is, I yeah, know. yeah, up, up there. Yeah. Yeah. Like I say, what a great night. Well, there's another one coming up next week, would you believe? Right. Same thing, Steve Thompson's Songwriting Masterclass. It's at the Steels Club um, in Norton, uh, which is where I saw the Steve Thompson band relatively recently. Uh, so that's next Thursday night. If you can get yourself along there, do so, because it's a really interesting night. Um, some of the um, dissection of the more well-known songs was really good, wasn't it, Paul? I mean, I, yeah, could, I could listen to stuff all night about songwriters like Jimmy Webb uh, and, and Bert Bacharach and Hal David. Yeah. And that, they, were, they were really entertaining. And it, Steve must have been on stage, although it was actually the floor of this venue, for a good two and a half hours, maybe, in total, something like that. Well, the first 
he was on for an hour and a half. The first half. The first half, when he, he, he forgot to turn himself off. <laughs> he, he just kept going, didn't he? But it was... That, the, the, the section they did on Brian Wilson was the bit that really got Oh, me. that was that was, that was interesting. really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know a lot about actual playing music, but Steve was talking about inversions, wasn't he? Mm. And God only knows in particular, which is just full of these inverted chords. Mm. Um, and and Steve said he can he can sit there at the piano and just play that sequence of of chords for hours and hours and hours. And I presume that's what Brian Wilson did. But I think Brian struggled with his own demons, didn't he? And he yeah. certainly struggled a better. Um, the stuff that he wrote in 66 and 67. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, uh, every time the Beach Boys put a great album out, what, what, what would happen? The Beatles would put a better one out. So. Yeah, which I don't think helped. I don't think it helped, Brian. But, yeah, they say the, 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 just looking at those songs and, and, and listening to them in detail uh, about with somebody who knew what he was talking about, yeah. it really opened my eyes. And it was a great night. Uh, Steve, if you're listening... Really top notch, mate. Yeah, well done, Steve. Yeah, well done, Steve. Did a brilliant job, which we thoroughly enjoyed. And uh, see, if you are around in the concert area um, on next Thursday, uh, get along to the Steel Club and uh, see what we're talking about for yourselves. Okay, on to our next track now.